Devrilk on deep dives. Yar. Thank you everyone for joining this uh, this talk. Whoever is watching, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Um, I want to talk about visualizing Devrilk scope and goals primarily for two reasons. I personally have found Devrilk to be a a space where there's a lot of overlaps. And when there are a lot of overlaps and you work with multiple teams and with different goals, it becomes harder to justify a vision or to do- talk directly and clearly about what you exactly do, right? Um, and also depending upon the, I've worked with bigger companies and smaller companies, right? So I want to talk about this to understand no matter which company you're working with, it still holds you know, some relevance wherever you are. So I'll start with a little bit about myself. So I've spent nine years in Devrel now. Uh, I'm currently a developer relations engineer uh, at AUKUS. Uh, AUKUS is a, you know, a cloud-based offering on Netflix Conductor. Um, so the founding members are founding engineers of Netflix Conductor. They all came out of Netflix and now we're building on top of it. Uh, recently, this year, I won the CMX Developer Relations uh, Professional of the Year Award. So thanks to everybody who voted for me and I'm you know, very honored to receive that award. And previous companies that I've worked with are Google, Amazon, and Hacker Earth, right? And a few other startups. Um, so I want to start with just quickly telling you about the agenda. Uh, so we're going to talk about the type of companies that we have that, that can this might be useful for. We'll also talk about visualizing the scope, developer relation functions, and we'll break down the goals based on the functions that we define. Uh, we'll also talk about very briefly about mes- uh, managing up, down, and sideways. I I think some some of that was already, you know, talked about in in great detail uh, in the conference already. And then we'll open up for question and answers. So to begin with, right? So uh, just so you know that, uh, and I'm sure like a lot of people, if you're here, you're already a developer relations leader. You already know that there's a developer first company and there's a developer plus. So developer uh, first companies are companies whose primary focus are to create and sell products specifically for developers. So if you're creating Twilio or, uh, you know, if you have Confluence, right, uh, Jira, things like that. So these are primarily for developers. And if you're using, um, you know, let's say an SDK or a backend service, which developers use to create something, that's developer plus. So developers act as one of the bridges that you have to cross to actually go and reach the audience that uh, to you know you'll use the product so think of it this way right like if you're a, you're a, um, a developer first company would be a person who makes the knife so uh, the chef becomes a developer right so they will be using the knife and for developer plus the person who's eating the food made with that knife becomes developer plus right so essentially your food is also making impact at the later stage but the developer has to use it first to actually make that impact. So that's one of the things you can see the distinct, you know, uh, the distribution developer first are 32, one third of the companies and developer plus are more. So all the all the uh, strategies that we talk about today are going to be relevant for both of these uh, companies. And before we start, I also want to mention that all these opinions are just my own. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we always need to consider that every advice that we hear on the internet comes with their own context. So I've tried to keep this as uh, as broad as I can to ensure that it's not very specific or niche and it doesn't resonate with most of you. But at the same time, it will depend a lot on the uh, company size and what functions you perform with. So in case you need more uh, chit-chatting around this or I want to discuss more uh, strategies, you know, you can reach out to me. Um, I've, I'll, reach, I'll send you my social details and then you know, we'll further take it from there. So to talk about scope, right? Like one of the things that I've noticed across working with different uh, companies is that Devrel kind of touches primarily three focus areas, this product, engineering, and marketing. So let's take an example, right? Let's take one, uh, let's call our product, um, uh, a product ABC, right? So this is a product that a developer needs to use to actually uh, build something like build, probably ship out uh, faster, reduce uh, testing times and so forth. Uh, so there will be a product team which will be essentially made of product managers, or product marketing managers, or assistant product managers, things like that. Engineering will have engineering leaders, uh, developers, uh, and there obviously will be marketing, which has marketing managers, social media, content, things like that. Now, Devrel will actually have, will closely work with one of these three or maybe all of them. So you could be working in a company depending upon the scale and the size with all three of these verticals or just one or two of them. 
um so considering that as a possibility let's understand if uh, you work with a team that they they ha- you have all three of these what is the scope like what what can devil touch and what can it influence um so consider this right like let's assume all of them overlap the, the overlapping that comes out becomes three things right there's a developer experience developer marketing and community now if you notice closely right so there's product and engineering overlap comes out banks developer experience now um a developer experience as as a segment is uh, primarily focused towards improving the customer delight of the developers it elevates uh, their experience directly from where they find the product all the way till they actually use it and send their nps or feedback that i like the product or did not so directly from the awareness you know all the way from awareness right at the very end where they done with the job and they can move on to the next one how was their entire experience in their journey where all did they fall where all they found you know their experience could have been better did they find the documentation on the right time or not uh, and if you look at product and marketing's overlap which is developer marketing this is where um, this is considered this like an orbit right um, think of it the outermost layer where uh, the developers need to find the product or we need to you need to be made aware of the product a lot of devils actually speak at conferences much like myself and much like right now right we are here to actually talk about the product and the impact that it can create uh, now when we talk about the product um, and conferences and make people more aware through our content um, through our written blogs or so forth what we trying to do is essentially reach out to developers who are potentially um, looking for similar products or at least keep this product in their subconscious mind so whenever they are out there looking for something similar we are at least on their radar right there's a beautiful um, uh, website here called tech radar i think uh, they have you know they they tell you uh, which tool is in what radar and how many developers are considering buying that so to reach there itself is in its own feed right and this is what product and marketing overlaps or uh, into and creates developer marketing one of the things which i am really passionate about and i think this is something that has caught up like a lot in last few uh, years is the community aspect of actually building things especially devrel uh, i think the way uh, uh, community works in devrel and actually technical spaces is far more nuanced and far more sophisticated than uh, you know a lot of other things that i've seen uh, the way that uh, communities uh, function within uh, devrel is is just astounding because not only it actually does a peer to peer learning so there could be a developer uh, looking for questions and there is another community person who answers it uh, but there are a lot of community members who will build the solutions that people like themselves or their peers are looking for so once you reach that space right where it's not just peer to peer learning but it's also bi- like peers are building for peers and they consuming within you reach a very holistic self sustained model and i think from there on you know it's it's a very sorted and very great uh, road ahead so we'll talk about all three of these a little uh, more in detail as we go so the first thing that i want to talk about is developer experience right and before i do that i just wanted to tell you that uh, considering you have all three of these verticals in your company or just one or two of them and depending where the devil sits or uh, which role does it report to does it report to the ceo cto marketing this diagram could be influenced but assuming we want to keep this generic and uh, you want to work you know there is a possibility of overtaking these goals and having the scope of actually working with all three of them uh, you know we'll move forward and consider all of them individually now these are three functions one of the f- first function that we'll talk about is developer experience now we spoke about how uh, developer experience starts from all the way where they identify the product right at the very end where they use the product and actually move on to the next uh, you know next step in the cycle so the north star goal here is to actually uh, find developer delight right and the reason i say north star is that you could find x number of ways uh, to build goals right like and to uh, find ways to actually improve the customer delight i mentioned few of the goals here uh, that we focus on and you can do but if there is anything that focuses you or directs you towards the goal where there is developer delight i think you should consider that one of the things that we the, the you know most obvious thing that comes into the mind is documentation developers are people who like to figure out things on their own they the first thing that they look for whenever they identify a new product to work with is documentation 
how frequent is the documentation updated how well versed it is is it missing anything those are few things that we take care of now uh, one of the things where developer first companies uh, or even developer plus plus companies right if you actually go out to them and tell them that this is uh, this is what we have for you uh, what they'll do is they'll they'll talk about the infrastructure or the um, you know the stack that they're working in and then tell you that can something like this fit into uh, whatever system that we've built we don't want to change our systems or our ways just because we are using your tool so that challenge involves building uh, demo applications or uh, use cases and plugins for the developers now not only when you're selling right like a lot of times you want to uh, kind of flex and showcase the reach of your product so building demo applications or uh, use cases and plugins uh like no code plugins right there are a lot of uh, uh, ways where there is an open source version of the same product much like aucus and there's obviously like a cloud version and there are uh, no code plugins for the same thing i you know one of one of the uh, companies that we worked with was an auth api um an auth api also had a no code plugin right so uh, depending on whichever uh, developer you working with you have to make sure that you're building for them and for the ecosystem that they already operate in uh another thing that we do here very frequently is being developer zero now developer zero means that before it reaches the market before there is even a first developer that uh, checks out your newest release or your latest uh you know latest development or update uh, developer relation team like developer teams actually become developer zero and test the product in house they share their uh, experiences they share their uh, insights and they tell what broke where what can be improved in terms of ui ux functionalities um you know uh, performance and so forth and if that flies you know it it kind of moves on to the next phase uh, so the reason like developer zero is like a great uh, segment here is that it not only acts as a qa uh, for the product but it also brings like developer relations have that foresight and also the scope to understand that if it goes to the community that they you know usually worked very closely with how will that be received and dev zeros uh, usually have the foresight and understanding of what were our community like what was our community expecting with our latest release so they can also influence and check for that as well and keep the community informed so that's one of the things that we do with developer experience you can see the overlap is between product and engineering right uh similarly uh, the next thing was developer marketing so let's say you've built something right let's say you've built a uh, a tool or like a, a, a you've built like a functionality that is ready to go ahead in the market now your um now the goal comes out that you want to make people aware and we want to make sure that you're present in the conversations where people are discussing a potential use case or a potential uh, solution to what you've built um how do you do that one of the things very obviously would you think about social media presence and engagement you would collaborate with a lot of people you will release a lot of content you'll do hackathons meetups and you'll create advocacy programs like uh, student programs or uh, campus programs or uh, meetup chapters things like that anything that involves other people talking about the product or at least creating some buzz or some news around it now this is something which is very easy to understand it's an overlap between product and marketing i'm sure this is people have been doing this for a year or uh, like for for years right and uh, the reason devrel also can touch upon this is that the way De like devrels will explain something kind of sits closer to what developers would want and i think they can sense the uh, sense the terminology sense the uh, a, a, um, compassion empathy that devrels put in in actually releasing beautiful content something which is easier to understand something which is easier to work with uh, so devrels can also touch uh, a lot of these goals right uh, and the north south goal like i said is awareness and presence so if you can find more goals uh, i would love to know what those are um, you know anything that can create the virality of what you're doing uh, it could be any sense a lot of people kind of consider github stars as uh, developer marketing metric now that's that could work for some of you uh but yes so these are a few goals that i i kind of uh, pay heed to whenever i'm uh, thinking about developer marketing and uh, the last one as we saw was community management right so this is like an overlap between engineering and marketing uh the reason like community management has like engineering aspect is because um for you know this 
there is something about uh, engineers explaining to other engineers that is something irreplaceable right and north star goal here is to not like we spoke about before was not only to instill peer to peer learning but also find ways that your community question community has self sustaining models right so somebody asks a question within the com- within the community and gets answers immediately from other community members so community generated content becomes like the uh, like the hardest to achieve but also the most is the gold standard is the uh, like the last mile so to say right of any of community actually caring about the product and caring about people who are using the product uh, and content could be anything it's not necessarily videos and con- videos and uh, you know audio podcasts and things for like that but also simple answers like this is what you can do right um one of the things that uh, we do is that in developer marketing you saw that we have written audio video right so we do a lot of po- podcasts we also do youtube videos we do meetups uh, and community you can also use your community management uh, users find these people who have been strongly advocating about your product and answering a lot of questions and use them for developer marketing to actually talk about their experiences their ways of solving issues and take them on your podcast take them on your youtube videos and uh, use that and make a star out of your community because not only it rewards their loyalty and the time that they spent on your product but it also makes them a better leader a better communicator and potentially a devil right like who knows maybe they likes doing this so much that they eventually change their path and i think you can you know you can be a pivotal point in that uh, in their journey if they pursue that path uh you also as a in community management uh, find ways to support onboarding issues and also working issues uh, a lot of people use discord slack and discords or you know what not to actually find these questions and get these answered um and that's that's a great channel to actually build feedback channels as well uh, for me personally i think uh, one of the gold standards of actually building a product with community is where not only community uses your product but it also influences it right so a community community led product would be such uh, that community has an idea of where the product is headed they're not only uh, involved in the decision making process or like and also like you know they also find a way to actually plan their releases or plan their upcoming near future based on the product that you uh, built that they're working with and that case could be yours right uh, community led product so comes with the philosophy that imagine if you're a if you're a chelsea fan right uh, if you're into football let's say you're a chelsea fan and there is chelsea says that you know for this season we want you uh, to design our jersey right and if you actually take out the time and design a jersey and that gets selected and they wear it throughout the season or for one match whatever the level of uh, ownership or the level of um, you know you're hooked into their success you're invested now because your hard work and your uh, your insights and your you know your whatever you've built with right it's not only was paid attention to but it was actually implemented and that creates a little bit of investment in their success they root for you they become your fans and uh, you know they have they wish for your prolonged success because they feel connected to the cause uh that's one of the ways that i think community can not only use the product but also influence and build with it uh, that can only happen if there is a feedback channel open uh, and feedback channels need to be open through uh you know discord slack or whoever and you need to take time to actually do community calls round tables to understand where this is headed right uh it takes time to build but it's definitely worth it and i think it's one of the hardest goals to achieve but definitely you know one of the most rewarding and fulfilling ones uh, for both the parties the co- businesses as well as the community members so that's something that we can do in community management now the last thing that i want to talk about right um, is managing up down and uh, sideways uh, so a lot of these things will kind of boil down to two things one is that you have to get buy ins from the uh, stakeholders that you're working with now we saw that community you know devrel is working with engineering product and you know and marketing which involves a lot of stakeholders which involves a lot of binds uh, which involves fi- finding budgets and then allocating them where and however there could be overlaps right so one of the metric uh, that one of the ways that a lot of people can actually segregate their uh, their stakeholders uh, is this right so you can see that on the y axis there is uh, influence of the stakeholders and on the x there is interest of the stakeholders 
so you can block you can find uh, under which department where they work and kind of assign them something right so if they have high influence and high uh, interest you, they they keep there they don't not only uh, interested in what you're doing they can also fund it or get things done for you and make sure that there is there are no road roadblocks so you have to manage them very closely people with high interest but very little uh, interest uh, sorry high influence and very little interest um they are obviously on the table because uh, they have high influence and they can inf- you know make things go your way if their goals are met uh, so one of the things that you can do when you're looking actually building something like this is reach out to the departments that you'll be working with identify stakeholders right identify their overlaps uh, and then understand what are these overlaps that you can be working with so you you work with product team speak to the head of product or chief product officer or product managers understand what their goals are understand what can be built here and then come back to the diagram that we have right three walls well Venn diagram and then once we have done that we can allocate those uh, allocate these stakeholders here now repeat this process with marketing as well as engineering and once you have like uh, goals from all three of them it's very easy to create kind of create something like this uh, because not only will you have the insight into leaders from product engineering marketing but you'll also have insights into what goals matter to them Uh, what are their priority wise what is something that they are allocating maximum budget to what are some things that they're always hiring for uh, what are few things that uh, they need help on right and once you find these things right once you find the overlaps between all all of these things you could say here is what i've heard from all all of you here are the overlaps that i have found i'm going to uh, kind of work with all of these overlaps that i have here are, here's the budget that i require for it uh, here are the people that i need to hire and once that is done it becomes easier to kind of bu- get their buy ins and get that budget approved because uh, they understand the overlap and i'm sure like your communication would actually ensure you know they they uh, they not only you know actually buy in your opinions but they actually invested in it right and you can see where they stand based on the metric uh, that we have here once that's taken care of i think it becomes uh, like an easier road to walk and from there on you know it's 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 fairly easy to kind of get your goals met um that's all i think that i had to talk about right like those those are a few things that i wanted to discuss if you have further questions right you can reach out to me on uh, twitter or linkedin and i'm sure like there are further que- like there are further conversations that can thrive from here i would love to know how many people actually use uh, this kind of model already or how many people just work with the only engineering all or only product or marketing and then understand uh, how do you guys manage this but i hope this there was something to take away from all for all of you but and if case you know there is uh, something that you would like to discuss or disagree upon happy to get in touch on uh, twitter as well as linkedin uh that's all that i had to say matthew over to you and i'm open for questions hey thank you very much jurish uh great to hear from you there um i guess the first thing that comes to my mind is that developer relations seems to be having um a moment of growth in india right now what are you tending to see amongst companies who are practicing devrel in india uh, in terms of uh interacting with the rest of the organization so one of the questions that i ask whenever i interview um is that if you were a devrel before whom did you report to if you were reporting to marketing if you were reporting to ctos if you were reporting to ceos what that tells me is that their goals would have been uh, either very product oriented either very engineering oriented or either very marketing oriented um so and this is this is one of the reason why devrel is you know get, gets a bad rep in explaining uh, that we don't know what you're doing because there's such an overlap and a person who's working devrel could be working with engineering leaders product leaders or marketing leaders that their goals could be very different they could just be creating content or they could just be creating sample apps and both of these kind of seem like opposite end of the spectrum but if you visualize it this way that all of there's an overlap for all of these things and this is where kind of devrel fits in it's great in indian ecosystem i think um, and it's because founders uh, are fairly new to this concept so they haven't accustomed this right and mad we did like this conversation in last of our in one of our conversations where we did devrel for startups right where a lot of devrels are kind of have just a lot of startups have picked up devrels and how are they managing it based on their growth like you mentioned 
what is their seed stage what is their funding stage and how do they allocate this uh, so so long story short i think um, the way indian ecosystem is functioning is dependent upon the, their funding stage it depend it depends upon uh, their how well versed or how big their product engineering and marketing teams are uh, and if if they seem self sufficient they don't hire devils so whatever seems to be lacking devils are usually allocated there hmm thinking about um you know you were talking about product engineering and marketing and the overlaps and you touched upon it a little bit just now as well so you had your uh you had your diagram with the three circles and you showed where the overlaps are and then what happens in those overlaps and in the middle there was a big overlap between all three yeah who do you who do you think sits in that in that intersection between all three and what do they do that there, there isn't necessarily an answer to that but i'm just curious because that one didn't have a label on the diagram and i'm always a, a bit curious about something that isn't pointed out Oh, I am very glad you asked that question. One of the reason I didn't label it to actually see if now somebody notices that. So <laughs> glad I'm <doing. laughs> so I'm glad that worked. Um, that central system is where the leaders of Devil sit. So it could be head of community, head of developer relations, or whoever the person whoever manages Devil, they have visibility into all three of them and they own these things. That's not a function state. That's a person state, right? so they, it belongs to an individual not necessarily a function like marketing developer marketing or community management do you think that it is realistic for one person to hold that whole, whole portfolio or do you think it should be split out between different people it should definitely be uh, split across different people but i do feel the visibility and the um, the ownership of explaining the difference comes to one person um, and it will right like those the organizations are structured that way that hierarchical right like it's just going to be a pyramid so they could be one vp of devil or they could be one head of devil so it becomes their onus to find these overlaps and allocate teams here uh, and it's a difficult it's far more nuanced than that like it's an easy question to ask but it's slightly different to answer sometimes because um, you would want people and you would want teams for all three overlaps but it kind of depends what is the stage of the company how many people you've hired Uh, or or are there people already hired for doing this who are not necessarily into devil so it becomes harder that way and this is why i think the education at founder stage or investor stage kind of comes into play and just now matthew was talking about somebody uh, uh, about how uh, you know like ceos care about devil or what do they think of it or investors think about devil i think um, educating upstream is also uh, our onus and we should do that too yeah that brings me on to my next question actually so you showed um you showed us how we could do a stakeholder analysis and that is something that i have done probably hundreds of times in my career because i used to work in marketing for quite a long time so anyone who's worked in marketing or some sort of business strategy role has done this and matty you've probably done thousands of them as well um so you look at the two axes it's generally something along the lines of influence versus interest or support yeah. and um you had in your high influence and low interest meet their needs now yeah. where I I've worked previously in organizations not necessarily in a devrel function and more in a marketing and communications function where I'm trying to win hearts and minds of tens of thousands of users so I used to work for the police we had 50,000 users we we trying to roll out a new piece of technology and we'd need senior buy in and as you can imagine in the police the at the executive level they have a lot of things to worry about so there could hmm. be something that they don't know about today that could happen this afternoon that just throws everything out the window and your project is very low on their list of priorities or they don't necessarily understand what you're doing and they don't see the value of it so that's why their interest is low um hmm. but they have a high influence so they could very easily sabotage your project or um accidentally not bad mouth it but accidentally uh play it down where you really need them to give you that support so as opposed to leaving people in that quadrant i would suggest you really need to move those high influence people to the right the top right how would you recommend we move people with high influence from low interest to high interest 
Fair enough. That's good. Good question. Um, so, so to summarize the question, you're saying there are people with high influence but very little interest. We want to move them towards not only high interest to high interest and high influence, right? And yeah. high uh, interest, right? Yeah. I I personally don't think that's like that's going to be possible hundred percent of the time uh, because there will be people who will have less interest in your projects, and um, I I don't know I feel that uh, that the entire organization caring about my goals and not only have that influence to support it but also interest in whether I'm meeting my goals is a little too ambitious, right? I mean, not necessarily will they care about what Cherish is doing and, and how he's turning things, right? Not everybody would there, but to to credit where it's due it's it's a nice approach like it's what way we should be headed to make, not only move people with high interest here is what i would do uh, i would understand their best case scenario realistic case scenario and worst case scenario so you said that if there is something that happens immediately worst case scenario hits they'll push the brakes they'll probably bad mouth or they'll probably say something which will stop everything right now here's the thing is the first thing that i will do for anybody with high interest or high influence is that I will make sure there is not there are X number of ways, plan A, B, C, D, to avoid the worst case from happening, right? So I will tell. So I will talk about what are your worst fears, and I'll make sure I do not create any plans which can even remotely uh, lead to that, right? Because if there is a high influence person and their worst fears come to true, it's forget about funding the project well your jobs on the line <laughs> you know uh, and the next thing is what is the realistic case scenario then i'll have uh, and and i'll be like if I, I plan towards the best case scenario towards a person with high influence do i have the bandwidth do i have the capacity do i have the team budgets and uh, you know people to do that if so i will aim for pleasing them the most but if i can't i will probably land up to the realistic case scenario but the so this is, I mean, this is more of a risk mitigation scenario as opposed to a stakeholder issue, in my opinion, because there'll always be stakeholders who will not have a lot of interest in what you do, yet they will hold a lot of interest or influence. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's like any sort of influencing uh, strategy that you're trying to do. You have to find out what the, the person cares about and really yeah. key into that and hand in hand with what they care about. It's not necessarily... It's not always what they love is what they care about. People also care about what they're scared of, like you said. Exactly. So, yeah, finding out what they love and what really strikes the fear of God into them is really important. Yeah, I, I agree. That, that's beautifully put. And, and I think one of the things that I should all you should always try, like always look closely for is what is their motivation? What is their fear? What is something that they're running towards? And what is something that they're running from? Right. So if, if wherever you can increase the gap or decrease the gap, if there you could decrease the gap towards where they're headed and you can increase the gap from what they're running from, you can always do that. If not this, then that. And understanding that not only helps you hire better, but also manage your stakeholders a little better. Yeah, and it, what's also really hard and challenging sometimes is if you don't have that high interest, so you could really understand that person really well, but their interest is so low they may not even think that they need to give you an audience. They might not even think they need to, to come to that meeting with you so you can actually put these things to them. So even just getting that, that time with them to get across what you want to get across can be really yeah. hard if their interest is so low. I agree. I agree. So I, I want to share a quick story with this, right? And I'll end, up, end with a quote here. So this happened with me in early careers. Uh, like in my early 20s, I was trying to push like a product that I had built. And I had to go through 13 revisions of the same PRD that I built. I got really frustrated saying that I'm trying to improve something, but not only I'm, uh, you know, not only I'm given with a lot of roadblocks, uh, but I'm deterred from this. Initially, it bothered me, but now I understand why they did it. Uh, then somebody told me that there was a Gandhi's, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's quote. He used to say, first they mock you, then they fight you, uh, then they join you, and then you win. So it's it's going to be like that. They'll probably ignore you. First they ignore you, then they mock you, then they fight you, then you win. So <laughs> ignoring, mocking, fighting, and winning. So if they're ignoring you, you're on the first stage. Well, look, it, it, that's probably a good time to wrap up because uh, we are coming to the end of our, our slot here. Um, so, Jurice, thank you very much. Where can people uh, find you on the internet? You did mention earlier, but give us a refresher. Sure. So you can find me on uh, Twitter. My name is Cherish Santoshi. My, you can find me on LinkedIn, which is also Cherish Santoshi. 
simple names, no hyphens, no aliases, just like that. You can find wherever, and I would love to have discussions more around this. Devrilcon deep dives. Yar. Yeah.